Hello everyone and welcome to Log Review. Today we are going to watch the TV series The Good Doctor. Sean thinks he is actually a playboy himself. Claire thinks the current porn has no plot. Sean suddenly said that there are several porn series that have a great plot. Kahlo goes very shocked that Sean would watch porn. This woman has an illness that is hard to talk about. When drive, Claire inserted the speculum to examine her pelvic cavity. She felt a pain that's unbearable. Extreme pain that's out of proportion to the visible injury could mean you have necrotizing flesh-eating bacteria. What? Drive. Claire couldn't get the tube into her lower body in time for the exam. Drive. Sean had to demonstrate the insertion of the tube himself while talking to Anna about the cause of her illness. He learned that Anna was only 18 years old and that she had monthly checkups. Drive. Claire was confused why she had her STD test every month. It turned out that Anna was a porn star. Claire smiled and laughed awkwardly. Drive. Sean found no necrosis in the lining of her uterus and cervix. He said it was definitely not flesh-eating bacteria. He was wrong, but she still needed to be operated. On to rule out a acillary cyst. Sean looked at the laundry and on the bus on his way home that night and missed his stop. It turns out that he has never been in love before. At that moment, Lay, a female neighbor who had just returned from the gym, passed by. She gave Sean a ride, but Sean said she smelled bad. Lee laughed awkwardly. In fact, she had always had a crush on this young man, who loved to tell the truth. The next day the surgery started. Drive. Andrews was the attending surgeon for this surgery. It was also the first time that he and Sean worked together on the surgery. He kept praising Sean for his good pelvic exam. However, there was an anomaly in the surgery. When they drained the pus from the patient's body, they found that the swelling did not go away. Drive. Andrew realized that the swelling was not just due to pus. Anna also had a tumor in the lower part of her body. It was completely encapsulating the vulvar nerve. Anna's condition was very bad. When Anna woke up, Claire told her about the tumor. If she wanted to remove the tumor, she would have to remove it along with the nerve. This meant that Anna's vagina would lose all feeling. It was a fatal blow to her career and her life. In the evening, Sean came home. He found the faucet was fixed. So he knocked on the repairman's door in the middle of the night and angrily confronted him because his faucet wasn't on the list of repairs. Sean asked him why he had to do the extra work. The repairman was baffled. He did a little extra work to fix the faucet for Sean. Instead of thanking him, Sean blamed him. The repairman curses and closes the door. It turns out Sean has a habit at night. He could only sleep by listening to the sound of water dripping at a certain frequency. So he broke the faucet on purpose. Sean opened the drain. He immediately saw a diorama of the pipes in his mind. As he looked at the diagram, he suddenly thought of a better way to treat Anna. The next day, he came to tell Drive. Andrews, they could connect the nerve of Anna's genital to the femoral cutaneous nerve. Branch on the inner thigh. Sean asked Anna. Would you rather lose feeling in your thigh or genitals? Thigh, definitely. They got Drive. Andrews approval and immediately proceeded with the surgery. The surgery began when he said induction electrodes are in position. Send a pulse. Immediately, the current fluctuates on the screen. Sean kept asking for a repeat. Anna's surgery went very well. Drive. Andrews once again approved of Sean's work. Drive. Andrews did the rest of the work himself. After the surgery, Anna woke up, but she was still under anesthesia. It would take another year for her genital to feel fully restored. All of Anna's worries and concerns disappeared. A tumor larger than the fetus had had grown in the pregnant woman's belly. It was completely blocking the growth of the embryo. Drive. Melendez told Lisa that the safest way was to terminate the pregnancy. Lisa wanted Drive. Melendez to surgically remove the tumor, but she has antiphospholipid syndrome. She could develop a life-threatening blood clot if she was operated on for a long time. But Lisa insisted on taking the risk. She had already had three miscarriages, so she wanted to keep the baby this time no matter what. But her husband was reluctant to let her take the risk and preferred to give up the embryo. Just when drive, Melendez didn't know what to do. Sean was happy to tell her the solution to her surgical difficulties. Drive, Melendez was speechless. As soon as he stepped out of the room, he told Sean not to embarrass him in front of the patient in the future. Drive, Melendez listened to Sean's solution but put him and Claire to other departments to do a jobs before the surgery began. Drive, Melendez explained the procedure to his colleagues. They will first remove the embryo through a cesserine section. After the tumor is removed, the embryo is put back into the mother's body. This is also the most difficult part of the surgery. It's important to make sure that every stitch fits tightly. But Anna's husband approached Drive, Melendez. He didn't want his wife to take that risk. Jack wanted to save his wife's life more than a baby. But his wife insisted on having the baby. 
no matter what. After much discussion, the board of directors came to a conclusion. Although the surgery was risky, but if the tumor is not removed, the tumor would have resulted in a fetal death. Anna, who suffered from antiphospholipid syndrome, would also die. In the end, drive. Melendez told Anna the board approved the surgery. Jack was devastated by the news. He was still trying to dissuade his wife from doing it. A few hours before the surgery the next day, Jack approached Drive Melendez again and asked him why he had agreed to do the surgery on Anna. Drive Melendez said he was confident. It was also the patient's decision. Soon the surgery began. The patient's vitals were stable. Drive Melendez slowly cut open her abdomen. They were just about to enter the uterus to operate. The vitals suddenly alarmed that Anna had a heart attack. This caught the doctors off guard. In the end, they had to stitch up Anna's wound and abort the operation. When Anna woke up, drive, Melendez told her that there had been complications during the surgery. She had suffered a myocardial infarction before they opened her uterus. Anna now had no choice but to end the pregnancy, otherwise her own body would be in danger. But Anna insisted on trying again, even her husband who had never allowed his wife to take risks, begged Drive, Melendez to try again for Anna. This puzzled Drive, Melendez. Jack explained that he had thought he could convince Anna to change her mind, but now he felt Anna's determination. If Anna didn't have the surgery, she would probably die. Once again, Drive, Melendez had a heated debate with the board. Drive, Andrew says it's all Drive, Melendez's fault. If he hadn't given Anna hope in the first place, things would not have been so problematic. If they had operated on Anna again, if she had a second heart attack, it would have killed her. Kalu was also touched by this great motherly love. He spent the night studying medical cases. He finally found a way to make it work. He said what if we kill her before she kills herself. Kalu explains that the surgery will stop her heart and use a shint instead. Because as long as Anna's heart is not beating, she won't have a heart attack. In this way, they have eliminated the biggest risk of the operation. But it didn't eliminate all the risks. The surgery was scheduled for the next day. Drive, Melendez couldn't sleep for a long time. The operation started early in the morning. Drive, Melendez blocked Anna's aorta. A bypass machine worked in place of her heart. A solution was then injected to cleanse the heart. Anna's heart then stopped beating. Then they successfully removed the fetus to assess her in section. Drive, Melendez was able to cut out a large tumor with his excellent knife skills. He then placed the fetus back into Anna's body. The operation was completed. Anna woke up and saw her husband smile for the first time. Drive, Melendez said that by diagnosing the health of both mother and child, he knew that she was carrying a boy. The couple smiled at each other after hearing the good news. Now follow my finger. The little boy looked exactly like Sean's long deceased brother. So of course he attracted Sean's special attention. That's when he noticed Mike's nystagmus and involuntary eye movements. This is usually a symptom of a neurological problem. So he went to make an appointment for Mike's brain court. He talked to Mike during the exam. Sean looked at Mike's face and thought of his brother. That's when he seemed to find something on the court. At that moment his supervisor drive. Melendez came over. He found that Sean was again doing random tests on patients. He was about to reprimand Sean. At that moment, Sean pointed to the court and said that Mike had a brain tumor near his inner ear. Then Sean came to Mike's parents and told them that Mike was terminally ill. He said that the hospital would arrange a consultation with a leading oncologist for Mike. But before he could finish his sentence, Mike's father said there was no need to do that because they already knew that Mike was terminally ill and had found an oncologist. They just didn't want to burden the child, so they didn't tell him. They also asked Sean not to tell Mike the truth either. This is difficult for the honest Sean. Sean is not a good liar, so he asked Drive, Claire to help him. Claire described Mike's condition as if he just had a small cold. But this made Sean feel uncomfortable while he was caring for Mike alone. Sean was torn between telling Mike the truth and not telling him. Mike could see that something was wrong with him. Mike told Sean that he could handle whatever happened. Sean said bluntly, You have cancer? Yeah, I know. But what Sean didn't expect was, Mike was not very surprised. Mike actually already knew this. After his parents took him to the hospital for a checkup, they bought him his favorite game console the next day. Because of his parents' unusual behavior, Mike searched the internet and found out the cause of his illness. But Mike not only accepted the truth, but also comforted Sean that he was not afraid of death. This made Sean determined to save him. He kept looking through the information and case reports. That's when a set of words caught his attention. On the paper, it said mild rash, but the chances of it happening were slim. Sean immediately analyzed all the symptoms Mike's body was showing in his head. In the end, he concluded that Mike's cancer was a misdiagnosis. 
So Sean went to his primary care doctor, Drive, Melendez, and couldn't wait to share the good news with him. Sean believes that Mike's cancer is not osteosarcoma. Mike's symptoms were more consistent with a virus. This virus causes osteolytic lesions in patients, so it was misdiagnosed as osteosarcoma. This virus can be easily cured, although this is theoretically true, but Mike's previous two lab reports both showed osteosarcoma. The chance of misdiagnosis in both cases is only 0.3%. Drive, Melendez doesn't think that's even possible, and he wouldn't want Mike's family to hope for such a slim chance. If they get it wrong, it will hurt the family even more. But Sean wouldn't give up. Since the attending doctor wouldn't allow it, he snuck into Mike's room to test the theory. Mike was happy to hear that he might not have to die. He was very cooperative and allowed Sean to check his body. At that moment Mike's parents came in. His father asked Sean what he's doing. Mike hurriedly made the excuse that his arm hurt and he was taking painkillers. The honest Sean would not lie. Wouldn't explain why I'd be injecting your lumbar re So he said directly that Mike's cancer was misdiagnosed. But his mother is furious. When she hears that Sean has told Mike about his terminal illness, Sean kept repeating his new findings. Mike's father couldn't stand him anymore and kicked him out. At that moment Mike suddenly coughs violently and coughs up blood. Sean rushes forward to call a ventilator to help. Sean found that the court showed a possible embolism in Mike's body. It was located at the bifurcation of the pulmonary artery. The situation was very dangerous. Sean wanted to assist Drive, Melendez in surgery, but he was refused. Drive, Melendez realized that Sean was overly concerned about Mike and was afraid he would get into a mess. Surgery begins. Mike's heart was barely pumping blood. Drive, Melendez quickly found the location of the embolism and prepared to remove the embolus. Sean waits anxiously at the observation table. This was the second time in Sean's life that he was helpless. The embolus had been removed from Mike's body. His EKG showed normal, but as Claire was stitching up his wound, she suddenly noticed something unusual. Drive, Melendez came over and instantly understood what was going on. Drive, Melendez came into the waiting room and unfortunately told Mike's parents. Mike's osteosarcoma had metastasized to his chest cavity. It is possible that Mike will pass away soon. Sean's eyes were full of sadness when he heard the news. He regretted that he should not have told Mike's parents about the misdiagnosis. He thought of his brother Steve who looked exactly like Mike. When they were young at home, his father always tormented Sean because he was autistic, but Steve would rush up to protect him. Sean then left the family with Steve. On Steve's birthday, Sean gave him an old book called To Kill a Mockingbird. This book had helped Sean through the dark times. Unfortunately, Steve died unexpectedly. This became the pain of Sean's life. Let's go back to the present time. This Mike, who looks exactly like Steve, will be gone again. The parents still tried to comfort their son by all means and lied to him that everything would be fine. But Mike said he already knew he was terminally ill. The father thought Sean was the one who told him the news. Mike said he had known about it for a long time. The father kept apologizing to Mike. The mother was already sobbing, but Mike acted stronger than they thought. He even told jokes to lighten the mood. Sean passed by the room and watched Mike from afar. He was afraid to go in. Mike smiled at him. After his parents left, Sean came to the bedside and looked at Mike who was sleeping. He remembered the scene of his brother's death. Mike woke up at that moment. Sean was afraid to face Mike's family because he gave them false hope. But Mike didn't care. Sean then took out the book and read a chapter to Mike. Mike also listened quietly. Soon he put down the book. Sean gave the book to Mike. He took the bookmark and got up to leave. His tears gradually moistened his eyes. What is Sean feeling in his heart when he is autistic? This is the end of the episode. See you next time.